my father is here my maker is here my creator is here Yahweh 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 I worship Lord, I worship you, Yahweh, Yahweh.
when you hear these songs now you may not understand what is happening to your spirit as you listen how be it when you step out of this place you step into another dimension of reality that you cannot even explain these songs have a way of they are the songs of zion they they bring a hunger in your spirit they cause you to love him there's an intercourse that happens when we sing these songs they're not special numbers they are the songs of zion sharing a very powerful message tonight I really believe that this is cardinal the growth of the church and the body of Christ this is very very important all the messages and ministrations that come from this altar by the grace of God are sanctified true we are committed to teaching the uncompromising truth of God's word hallelujah but I want to teach a song hallelujah it's a very powerful song now the bible says sing unto the lord a new song hallelujah and um, sometimes in our secret place just worshiping him he gives us these songs songs of the spirit they are not composed they are received hallelujah and songs are very powerful because they open us up to the realities of the spirit and it's one thing to write a song is another thing to be permitted to release these songs and so tonight one of these songs will be let out i believe that it will edify us it's a very simple song hallelujah can you help me are you playing the right thing it's not the slow yahweh song then it's, it's like it. Hallelujah. Okay. Can I have it fast? Your hands together. Permit me to be a music director for the next five minutes. Are you ready? Now? Very powerful. Very simple song. I'll sing it and then um, allow me to sing it once. Okay, listen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are the king. 
Koinonia Mass Choir. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know, little things like this have a way of just taking away every fear and anxiety. Did you know that? The Bible says, A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Sometimes we just become children in His presence and jump and sing. I know for some of you it's a bit embarrassing considering your status. I apologize. But I realize that the greatest in the kingdom is the child. Yes, there is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us in the name of Jesus. All right, very quickly, let's go to the word. Lord, we thank you. Let your word come with power. Let it come with grace. Let it come to change our hearts in the name of Jesus. 
teaching on a very powerful subject very very powerful and critical um, the Bible makes us understand in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 down to 12 hallelujah that when Jesus resurrected he gave gifts unto men some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors the Bible says for the edification the building the equipping the preparation to make ready hallelujah those who will do the work of the ministry so that we will come into the fullness of the stature of the person of Christ and that we be firm so that we are not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine I'm going to be teaching a message I titled firm foundation we're going to be examining some powerful things today firm foundation very pretty Luke chapter 6 Luke chapter 6 oh yes there is no other there is no other there is no other truly there is no other Luke 6 verse Verse 46, Luke 6, 46, very quickly. And why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? 47, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you whom he is like. 48, he is like a man who built an house, and dug deep, and laid the foundation. Take note laid the foundation on a rock and when take note not if when when a flood arose the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a a man without a so it's possible for a man to be without a foundation like a man without a foundation was a consequence he built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great tonight the lord is going to be helping us to examine the foundations on which our faith is built upon hallelujah there are so many believers who we do not know what we believe in the kingdom there are many believers who do not know what they stand for do not know what the kingdom is all about and what we stand for that's the reason why people are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine hallelujah we live in a time and a dispensation where anybody can cook up any doctrine in the name of jesus christ hallelujah and one of the things that the lord is helping us to do is to let us um permit us to be grounded steadfast in the integrity of god's truth and his word hallelujah so that when satan comes to sway us from the truth when he comes to make us look as if the word of god is a lie and that god is out to deceive us the firmness and the quality of our foundation will keep us and will cause us to represent him there are so many believers without structural foundations hallelujah that's why i like the good old orthodox circles when they get people born again they have what they call discipleship programs now i know that a lot of what people call discipleship today is just religious indoctrination where they bring people and teach people about men and the doctrines and the dogma of men hallelujah how be it is important that when believers come into the kingdom they are well grounded hallelujah the quality of any foundation determines not just the longevity but the quality of that building hallelujah so very quickly we are going to be talking about firm foundation the goal of this teaching tonight is to bring a body of Christ 
to a point where we understand the basis on which our faith the basis on which our trust in God the basis on which everything around our Christian life is hinged upon for when we understand that it will be impossible for Satan to sway us there are so many believers that have given up in the midst on the face of certain challenges that's because our foundations are faulty many of us our foundations are built on religion and not truth hallelujah there are so many believers who have their foundations built upon the doctrines of men and the 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 understandings of men many of us our doctrines our, our foundations are built upon denominationalism and uh, uh, traditions of men and legalism and all of these things what is important for us to re-examine our foundations that we be grounded hallelujah now very quickly what is a foundation we are teaching please if you have something to write write I want to encourage you every time you come here we are coming here to learn God's word hallelujah so come with something to write it's very very important many of you just throw with pieces of papers in your pocket then you just bring it out and you see where you wrote your list for the market gas stove kerosene you just draw a straight line and then you are writing something that is supposed to change your destiny invest there's there's a preparation when you go for a lecture you go with your notebooks it tells you that you value what the lecturer is about to say and that you realize its importance to equip you for the times of exams Hallelujah. Don't feel bad if you didn't bring anything. There's love. Love covers everything in this place. Hallelujah. So what's a foundation? Very quickly. The dictionary defines a foundation as the lowest load-bearing part of a building. The load-bearing part of a building. Typically below ground level. So a foundation is not on the zinc. Foundation is below ground level. The load bearing part of a building is called its foundation the load bearing part that part of the building that is responsible for taking all the weight another definition a body or ground on which other parts rest or are overlaid hallelujah that means when we pile books upon this substance this becomes the foundation the platform on which all other structures are laid and are lifted so that's very very important that means the foundation of your faith in christ is the platform on which every other revelation every other understanding every other pursuit will rest upon that means when your foundation is faulty believe me no matter the quality of the building it is liable to crash hallelujah so many believers who do not understand the concept of foundation and the importance of understanding the things what did jesus teach hear me what did jesus teach when he came to the earth what was his message what did he leave with us what was his um mandate towards the church these are the things the pillars on which our christian race will be founded upon for many people, their foundation for the Christian journey is just success and money. So many believers whose foundation is money. They were lured into the kingdom as a bait to become prosperous. Hallelujah. Now there's a place for wealth and prosperity. It's part of the packages and the blessings of redemption. But that is not a foundation. Are you listening to me? It's not a foundation. This light is beautiful. It's illuminating the place is very important the microphone is beautiful but these are not the foundations of this building are you listening to me so that a a doctrine or a teaching is not a foundational one does not mean it's not relevant how be it when the, the bible says if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do hallelujah so it's important because there are many of us who have great revelations but they are resting without foundation we know things about the realm of the spirit 
we know things about angels and then because many believers do not have correct foundations we begin to double into elements of witchcraft into metaphysics christian science new age theology in our bids to understand the reality of the person of christ we begin to explore this in quote mystery called god and many people land themselves into metaphysics and christian science and new age doctrines all in an attempt to understand god hallelujah so it's important but when you understand the basic foundation of who god is many of you who study physics and all of this they teach what we call si units hallelujah and every other um units that will be derived is only a derivative of these things is that correct and so we must understand the tenets on which the christian faith is built upon the benefits of having a firm foundation is number one it gives you a rock solid christian life gives you a solid christian life that your christian life is not based on religious doctrines of men my church your church my pastor your pastor this is what i was taught this is what i knew growing up no a firm foundation gives you a rock solid life number two is the antidote to wrong antichrist doctrine the antidote to religion it's the antidote to falsehood when you have a firm foundation you will have discernment enough to know that no matter how powerful a teaching how many of you okay well I, I don't want to ask that question but I know that there are a number of people who were involved in all kinds of yoga zodiac new age things and let me tell you if you're looking for in quote revelation go to the new age you will see revelations that will astonish you hallelujah confucius came with his own rema buddha has his own all kinds of people have their own rema and they look logical in quotes but when we have a firm foundation it becomes an antidote to error let me show you something the bible has to say turn with me very quickly to first john chapter 4 there's a caution that is so important especially for our generation first john chapter 4 thank you jesus at least if you have your bibles i appreciate if you turn there first john if you don't have just share with someone first john chapter 4 beloved believe not every spirit is it in your bible hallelujah but test the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets are gone out into the world verse 2 by this know ye the spirit of god every spirit that confesseth that jesus christ is come in the flesh is of god and every spirit that confesseth not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god and this is that spirit of antichrist of which ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world it's in america it's in nigeria it's in zaria it's in abuja abuja it's in portacot it's everywhere and several believers they truly love god but because their foundation is not firm many people have left the doctrines that jesus left with the church Many people have left the message that Jesus gave the church. Many people have derailed from the expectation that Jesus has for the church. And we are doing all kinds of things. Preaching different kinds of gospels. Being motivated by different kinds of things. And tonight the Lord is going to be helping us to examine our foundation. Say Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you Heavenly Father. Now there are two things I will be doing very briefly. Number one is to we are going to be examining very briefly i'm not here to create confusion and talk but very briefly we are going to be examining what has gone wrong with the church especially with respect to several doctrines there have been several doctrines and then we will we will 
end by looking at what I call the Christian's statement of faith. How many of you have gone to a website and then you see statement of faith? A summary. How many of you are or were in the Anglican? Let me see your hands. Hallelujah. When I was in the seminary, we had something we called the Apostles' Creed. How many of you still remember? I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth, his only begotten son. Uh -huh. Some of you have forgotten. New creation has carried you. Hallelujah. And every single day, although we're doing it religiously, but little did we realize it was putting in us a summary of everything that Jesus is and that he represents the church. Very, very powerful. And tonight, we're going to be examining very quickly. Now, because of lack of firm foundations, we've had people use all kinds of bases to interpret different things in scripture. Hallelujah. People have misinterpreted several things in scripture and as a result has led to movements has led to patterns has led to doctrines and errors and several believers are suffering one of it is the issue of appearance hallelujah as a result of this there is a great controversy in the church as regards the concept of appearance now that means everything dressing and all of that a man should not wear what belongs to a woman you know and this and that women should veil or not veil their hair wear trouser or not wear trouser makeup or not makeup jewelry or not jewelry and although many believers want to press into God this has become in many circles for instance the basis for many things choosing leaders determining whether people are growing or not hallelujah and we cannot pretend that there is need for a voice to be raised and address this that's why the bible says the foundation of the church was built upon the apostles and the prophets and if the apostles and the prophets fail to bring the church to order then we have failed as a gift of the church hallelujah there are several people suffering in silence not even knowing even those who claim to be walking in quote in the now new creation cannot even defend why they are doing what they are doing for instance those who wear veils cannot tell you why they are wearing veils those who say okay i have rebelled now i'm not wearing veils. they cannot even tell you why they are not wearing veils those who wear trousers cannot tell you why they are wearing trousers those who don't wear cannot tell you why they are and there's all kinds of confusion in the body and the church is full of a bunch of arrogant and religious people who claim they understand many people who believe they are the Holy Spirit in the church and all kinds of people have written devilish books born out of new age and the doctrines of men and several ministries have used it as their patterns and they have discipled many people generations into error the Bible says nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that name the name of Christ. So God has his own foundation. There are many ministries that have built their foundations. Many doctrines. Many pastors. Many church leaders. Many apostles. Many prophets. Have their doctrine. But the Bible says there is something called the foundation of the Lord. Nevertheless. In spite of all kinds of foundations we have. There are many believers, for instance, who have been made not to press into intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Every time you pray, you sense the presence of God. And every time you go and ask the elders, they tell you you are demonic. And these experiences have derailed us from koinonia, intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Because the people cannot understand what is happening, they call it wrong. That's what happened to the scribes and the Pharisees when Jesus came. They didn't understand the new move and the patterns that the Holy Spirit and several people have been misled and misguided there are many people who believe that the apex of their spiritual experience should be the apex of the church's spiritual experience 
so that when there is any spiritual experience that defies their own personal experience they term it as error and they write books to defend what they believe is their knowledge but there is no man who is a custodian of wisdom except Christ himself all of us are students in the school of the spirit so instead of arguing and bringing stupid opinions and boldly writing books and making claims and misleading people i cannot tell you how it pains me when i watch people walking in error and religion there are many doctrines there are many religious circles that do not believe for instance in the ministry of the holy spirit there are many religious circles for instance that do not even believe in the trinity ha, follow me. so the issue of appearance has been a big issue many of you have been keep, many of you the way you are blessing god now sitting on your seat i said god thank you whatever devil stop me from coming for koinonia tonight the ministry of the holy spirit it's another issue that has been fought violently in the church for others they have embraced all of his ministry except that strange controversial issue of tongues every other one is okay for others they have totally exited out there are many circles that have taught today that the era of miracles are over they believe it it's in their books they force you to to know it before they baptize you if you came tonight to hear the truth then you will hear it and hear me friends there are two categories of people in this place as i speak those who are open-hearted to say lord please walk on me it doesn't matter what i have believed if it is against your truth my heart is open and those who will shell themselves out of religion and begin to explain away the things and say all these kind of people have always known that these young people are very stupid now i have an opportunity to confirm it ellie who said there is a spirit that is in man and the inspiration of the almighty is what make it men of understanding hallelujah and then the concept of sin and holiness mm. We have certain people who believe that you walk your salvation with fear and trembling. And they've gone out of context to what the Bible says. And teaching people to live under religion and bondage. There are so many people trying to die for their sins. When Jesus has paid the price. On the other hand, we have other foundations who have taught people that because Jesus has died for do anything. Sleep in the name of Jesus. Drink in the name of Jesus. Steal in the name of Jesus. Lobby in the name of Jesus. There's grace for you. Both of them are faulty foundations. There is a foundation called the foundation of the Lord. So we have many people drinking and smoking and come and climb the pulpit. There are many discipleship leaders who are the drunkards. There are many people who do all kinds of things. Ah. I hope this silence means you are receiving it. Hallelujah. Grace and works. Another issue. Very controversial issue in the church. Others believe when the dispensation of work, work it out. Everyone will only help those who help themselves. Now there are people who believe that God is our father and therefore cross your leg as a son and allow him to just ride you through destiny then we have the issue of salvation once saved always saved or once saved you can lose your salvation it's another controversial teaching so who is right and who is wrong i'm addressing an issue i'm sorry to say it and i say it with all humility that many people are afraid of addressing on pulpit because they are afraid of losing members afraid of you must be dead to yourself to take this kind of series at the end of this meeting now there are going to be different stories and opinions 
listen friends God didn't ask us to become philosophers he just asked us to become obedient to his word as the Holy Spirit leads us we have complicated the reality of God's word let's look at a few others the doctrine of the rapture we have others who have taught that there's nothing called rapture no rapture no Jesus and 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 truly um, it's true that there's no word rapture in the Bible as it were okay I've not I've not stood in any side sure I'm giving two sides so I'm still neutral so we have those who preach the doctrine of the rapture that there is an event that is called the rapture others are saying there is an event that is not called the rapture it's another thing then we talk about the pre-tribulation the mid tribulation and the post tribulation i'm showing you different kinds of foundations that we have in this blessed kingdom of our father others have taught that the church will be persecuted and then when we are persecuted and everything is over christ will come and take the church that's what we call post tribulation others are saying we'll be persecuted for a period of three and a half years after that in the midst of it christ will come rapture the church that's what they call mid tribulation and then others say we are not going to face it so who is right because every one of us belong to one or two of these circles and you have been asking questions and then others say there's nothing like rapture we're going to be on earth forever hallelujah it's encapsulated in a popular doctrine called the doctrine of immortality then the concept of the antichrist who really is the antichrist this antichrist thing many of us cannot sleep we have been punished because of certain tapes you made a mistake of buying in bookstores and from that day till now your mind is not back because you had a faulty thing about the antichrist i remember one of my aunties i shared the story very humorously uh, i think in 1990 99 or 98 or something 99 minding my own business loving the lord this woman called me to our room and showed me one book latin book and they calculated everything and it showed that pope john paul the one that has died though that he is the antichrist based on certain roman numerals and it arrived to him hallelujah now she said look she's already rehearsing she stopped eating meat stop taking milk now listen what we're, we're, we're examining foundations tonight she stopped taking so several things and told me i said why she said she's preparing herself nobody knows tomorrow ah. and so she was incorporating into the fellowship out of love and sincerity it makes sense to me no meat no milk ah what else will you eat So who is the antichrist been several teachings you know why i'm saying this because many of us seated here were taught one or more of these things and how many of us truly desire to grow spiritually how many of us are ready to check our foundations and once and for all build upon something that is the truth of god that's what i told myself years ago i began to say lord examine my foundations and I found out that my life was built upon faulty things the concept of prosperity and poverty another foundation there are many people that preach that prosperity is the way forward I mean if you are not prosperous forget it. it's an insult to redemption there are others who have preached that if you are poor that's the way forward God likes it it's a nice life you live a quiet life you are not open to immorality you are not open to pride it be very nice in a simple one bedroom you and your wife and then one or two children why having five children is even a prosperity you have two or three according to a moderate and a contract life there are several other doctrines should women preach in church 
should they be allowed to preach in church God has said forget it every woman preaching in church is going to hellfire because the Bible says it now others have said it's true this is so where what is it have you not how many of us have been asking this question secretly confess now how many of you you just don't want to say it so that it doesn't become he says no with my mouth you hear it however these are our contemplations in the secret place and somehow we know that in the answers we will receive lie in the next dimension of our understanding and knowledge of christ like i said tonight my job is not to create controversy this is a long teaching and um i'm not here to begin to examine certain things but there are three of this that i want to address three of it hallelujah many of you think i'm going to talk about appearance i will not talk about appearance so if you are one let me tell you there are three things okay let me just talk briefly about appearance three things living faith will never be deeper life christ embassy will never be celestial church look up are you listening to me are you listening to me so let me announce once and for all on behalf of my glorious king and his government ladies in the no we will never reach a point where all the ladies in the world will stop wearing trousers and we will never get to a point in the world where all the ladies in the world will wear trousers hello i hope you like what i'm saying we will never get to a point where guys will stop wearing jeans and we will never get to the point where everybody in the whole world will wear suit. Listen, friends, the secret to the growth of the corporate body is to concentrate on our similarities, not our differences. Hallelujah. So should I say something at least about appearance? All right. Very quickly. We'll look at just one scripture. I didn't want to touch it. Hey, Holy Spirit, help me. You really want me to touch this? I will touch it if you can give me the popular scripture that says, Let a woman not wear what belongs to a man. Who can give? Calm down. Deuteronomy, what? All right, let's go there and see what the word of God has to say. Deuteronomy, what? Oh Lord, I pray that your word will come with power. Set men free. Many believers are saved. Many are filled with the Holy Ghost, but very few are free. We hail you most high. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. This was Moses giving the law of brotherhood, as many translations put it. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Are you there? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Mm. So that's the that's the, that's the scripture that has brought all kinds of things and um, we've had several people confused about all of this I did a little study shocking study so follow me we're going to examine just three words and then we'll be out of that place hallelujah the word pertaineth in the Hebrew is the word keli k-e-l-i-y and this is what it means in the hebrew we're examining that scripture there are several believers that take scriptures out of context that's why as much as possible try to get a bible concordance takes concordance or at least by amplified many of us you have one torn bible that fire burned half of it that's why you took in your pocket and bring. how will you grow that way when they open to the scripture you start you don't see the first part of the verse you are looking for because fire has burnt it and then you cram only half of it then you use it to build doctrines now the word pertaineth in the hebrew this is what it means 
it means number one an article it means a vessel it means an implement or an utensil isn't that amazing that's what the word pertinent means hallelujah very important now the word man that is used in deuteronomy 5 is not the word adam interesting i hope you know adam means man from the dust of the earth it's not the word adam is the word i don't know how to pronounce it i y s h you know what they call it that thing you put apostrophe right all right i y s h and this is what it means listen it means a soldier it means a warrior it means a man of war follow me are you listening to me it means a warrior a soldier a man of war men that go for war now you understand the context because at this point israel were always fighting hallelujah moses was giving something very very powerful and so if this were to be arranged and put properly this is what it would be in the hebrew the woman shall not put on the weapons or the armor of a warrior neither shall a warrior put on a woman's garment for all that do it is an abomination unto the Lord. Women were not permitted to go for war. I hope you know that in Jewish customs. Women were not allowed. Relax. Women were not allowed to go for war. Listen. Trust me. You are smiling. I'm soon coming back to the other side. I... Praise God. So Moses was admonishing the people, preparing them. It was an abomination according to the principles of the Jewish custom. That's why women didn't go for war. Scriptural proof. That's why Bathsheba was back at home. Hallelujah. When the people went for war. And David violated the principle because kings followed the people to go for war. And he didn't go for the war. And so while he was meandering around his veranda he saw the woman women were not that's why till today in certain nations of the world women it's just necessity that has made women to join military are you listening to me it was not part of the jewish customs that's why the worst kind of warfare is that you kill men women and children women and children were exempted is believed that when you capture the men and when you fight how many of you remember when gideon was going to fight the midianites hallelujah the women and the children were made to go back and then all the men the men of war were the ones who went and so on and so forth so that's what he's talking about he really wasn't talking about a man adam as it were he was saying it's an abomination to put on the robe of war that when the men become so irresponsible to a point that the women have to wear an armorage and go for war it is an abomination unto the Lord hallelujah and so these things were taken and then we began to use them to teach all kinds of things and now that's where the concept of trouser came in the concept of this and that came in and several people have insulted the western world have had on many pulpits many africans and nigerians ungratefully insulting the western world let me tell you what our official dressing were rags animal skin so if we are going back that's where we are going our official dressing was not skirts; it was animal skin let me tell you the official jewish clothes were even skirts. jesus of nazareth your jesus of nazareth that you watch what was Jesus wearing? Uh, hold on, calm down. Listen, as you are, I told you I'm coming back. Because there are many of you that you're agreeing to what I'm saying. It's not a, an openness for truth. It's just a way of endorsing your heart of rebellion. We'll still check it. Hallelujah. And so many people have been misled. And I know many books that have been written and many people have been said if you wear trousers you are going to hellfire others have been said if you wear skirts 
you are going to hellfire you are going to this you are going to that and sincerely look at me i'm not i'm not um if you know me i'm not a whether trouser or no trouser person that's that's really not me. the issue that the bible puts the central message is two christian character backed up by modesty and decency what the church should be addressing is modesty because in jewish days prostitutes didn't wear trousers they didn't even wear mini skirts but the, what they wore was transparent and there are many people who are like that they say say you say don't wear trousers okay oh, i will not wear trousers but what they are wearing can kill so have we solved the problem are you listening to me we have not solved the problem of of there are so many people who camouflage in religiosity but their hearts are terribly far away from god and there are many people i know a a a a, 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 a woman who um for years had a big challenge with these things and they truly believe there are many people today who believe that demons attack them because they make they, they did make up I know that we have read all kinds of occultic books that they use human hair level 666 level 777 level 12 12 12 and they have used uh, um, um, uh, uh, human blood to make this and all of that and many of you even cream you don't use because you say in the name of Jesus blah 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 story 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 this and that and that why are we religious I have a question to why do we allow religion to stop us from walking in the fullness of what God has called us? You are, whether you are wearing trousers or no trousers, if you come and you are indecent, it's our job to send you away and say, go and dress well. Hallelujah. The true Christian character should be that of modesty and decency. That whatever the Bible says, that let your eating meat not cause your brother to sin. If I'm going to deeper life today, I'll be stupid to dress like this and go to deeper life. Because, for instance, the, based on the, the doctrines and the tenets, they already believe. Why don't you quietly confirm? For the sake of the gospel. Are you listening to me? It's called spiritual maturity. If I'm going to talk among a company of elderly people, 50s and above why should i i there's there's nothing wrong it's not the issue of good or bad it's about being in the best position to communicate the life of christ are you getting blessed tonight and so dissolve that grouping thing we are the committee of ladies that wear trousers we are the committee of ladies who don't wear trousers we are the holy ones who are not sanctified ones and begin to address the issue of decency or indecency you have clothes that are not decent pack them and take them away hallelujah and then look like a true ambassador one who represents the government of heaven but for you to preach and say wearing trousers or no wearing trousers is going to be the solution is a vain pursuit. There are 6 billion people on earth with different kinds of mindset. And can I tell you something? We are all going to heaven. So I wonder how we will behave in heaven when we are already hating one another because of this. Many people if they have their way they will tell Jesus Christ create another supper. There is one big table and all of us are going to sit down on that table. It's called the supper of the lamb. So you better begin to love your brother right now. Because you may sit close to him at that supper. Why do we hate one another? Am I addressing something please? There are several people. There are several of you sitting down today. That you have been stopped. Um, they've stopped you from relating with other people on grounds of certain things god god brought roommates and friends that can change and transform your destiny but because of faulty foundations there are many people you know you hear a tape and a message that can bless you but simply because you have a problem with a few things in that man's church or whatever but you know this person loves god just personal things you don't receive it there are many of you that you are suffering from sin you are suffering from all kinds of habits and the Holy Spirit just points you to a message that was preached by W.F. Kumui. I say, Kumui, forget I'm a new creation man. I'm a this. And forget about whatever excesses, whether they wear earrings or this. Can you not open your heart and say, Lord, speak to me. 
I desire change more than anything. When we get that hungry, then we start forgetting. There are several people going to church is simply exploring to know those who are obedient to the word or not obedient by the standards of their foundation. So the moment we come to church, you're already frowning at everybody. The person sitting next to you put perfume and you're like, oh God, this can't be. Let me tell you something. Heaven is not for only you. Heaven is for all of God's children and you are only one. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? Is this setting somebody free tonight? Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. So let me leave that so that I can quickly go into something else. I hope that at another platform we'll discuss today. The issue of the doctrine of eternal salvation. I'm just touching the ones that matter. Two or three. The doctrine of eternal salvation. Once saved, always saved. True or false. See, everybody's afraid now. Say, ah, I better mind my business. So, what does the word of God have to say about the concept of salvation? Because we have two groups of people. Those who come, Father, I'm, I mean, Jesus Christ, I, I give you my life, I give you my all, take my all and all of that. And then, we walk contrite, we love God and all of these things. And then there are others who teach that the moment your name is written in the book of life, that's all. In fact, there are people that argue and say there's nothing called the book of life. There's nobody's name written in the book of life. How old are we that we are arguing with the world? How old are you on this earth? Hallelujah. And so let me teach you what the word of God has to say. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Look up. It is possible to lose your salvation. Say it after me. It is possible to lose your salvation. Hear me. Don't let anybody preach any. Let me show you something the Bible says. Help us, Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 1, verse 19. Paul was admonishing the church. We reconcile after the meeting, but this is very important. And you need to listen to it. Many of you have finished exams. So sit down and Let's have your attention and let God bless you. Galatians chapter 1 verse 9. i like all of us to read it. Verse 9. One to read. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have received, let him be accursed. Any of you say, ah, my prophet received it from the spirit. Turn with me. Second Corinthians 11 verse 4. Scripture to address your man of God. Now please, I'm bringing this out in love. Are you listening to me? We're not trying to condemn people or say this. And No, 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 no. We're not. I used to believe a lot of these things until I opened up my heart for God to help me too. So. Second Corinthians 11 verse 4. I like the word of God to speak for itself. That's why I'm saying open it. Are you ready? Verse 4. One to read. Preaching another Jesus whom we have not preached or if he receive another spirit which we have not received or another gospel which he have not accepted ye might well bear with him. Now look up. The word bear with him doesn't mean to believe him. Because that's what a lot of people have been misleading. And so somebody comes on your pulpit and is misleading your members. And I say the Bible says, just bear with him. And it's confusing the people. say, just wait a little while. And it's confusing. He says, say it. Once saved, always saved. There are people who believe that because it was your spirit that was saved. As a believer, when you go and fornicate, it's really your body that fornicates. Your spirit is still sanctified. And so you are going for it. Ah, it's what Yoruba people call the wrong. That's a lie. It doesn't make sense. So we have several believers who are living in all kinds and I tell you the truth, including ministers. I say it without any fear or favor. Men and women who have not kept the righteous precepts of God. Doing all kinds of things in the name of Jesus. 
and we justify all the things we are doing but if we are that generation that will usher in the king then there is need to check our foundation because right now i was i was um chatting with alex many of you know alex jerry and he was telling me the perversion that happens in america in america right now there's a show they do where the pastors are allowed to dance with some of the beautiful members i mean if you are not beautiful just count yourself out of that list they call it something yeah dance with the dance with the pastor so you come just boogie with the pastor and then when you dance is is meant to foster social cultural unity culturally correct scripturally incorrect nevertheless the foundation of the lord standing sure. i believe in prosperity i believe in divine health i also believe in holiness because see there are many believers who have got it all wrong when you just like you say what what does this church or ministry really say ah, you, can, you can do anything but what do you tell us flex enjoy ah, this is the wrong place here we, we iron people out not out of religion are you listening to me not out of religion but at the same time we have a responsibility under god to bring ourselves to a point where we are relevant in this society otherwise let me tell you something if we don't sharpen ourselves like this our generation will miss it in america right now there's there's all kinds of perversion marriage in america right now is the union of two adults anything well adult and a woman adult fine but the bible says therefore shall a man adam a man leave his father and mother and not cleave to another man cleave to not fish not uh, whale not not vulture not bed not your nice sweet german shepherd cleave to his wife and they two only they two are permitted to be one flesh a man and a woman cannot be one flesh you can be business partners yes you can be co-ministers co-laborers in the vineyard yes but not one flesh in terms of unity hallelujah and so it's interesting that your relationship be with the opposite sex if you are serious about marriage say amen if you are considering marriage make sure the person you are considering is not the same as you otherwise something is wrong who, who in the world would have believed that the church would need to address this hello Kim Madonna Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim. Hello, Gim Madonna. Hello, Gim. Hello, Gim Madonna. But hear me i've done something here forgive me hallelujah while it is true that it's possible to lose your salvation what many religious people put as the condition is wrong that's the balance we have established the fact that it's possible to lose your salvation i beg you friends don't let anybody deceive you not in the name of any teaching by the grace of god who are committed to teaching you uncompromising word of truth and everything you hear us teach in this place are things that we have taken out time to seek the face of God and seek knowledge from other members of the body hallelujah it is possible to lose your salvation but what is the condition so right because a lot of people have put religiosity and so when a believer for instance falls into the sin of fornication or falls into um, uh, robbery or something a lot of people look at him and say you have missed out 
there are many churches that call the person officially and say like Paul let's hand this over to the devil look at me please look at me once and for all let me clear this Paul did not die for your sins everybody please look at me Paul is not Alpha and Omega there are many places that Paul himself confessed his inadequacies Jesus Christ is perfect theology the Bible says looking up to Jesus the, he's the one who is the author are you listening to me so Jesus Christ is the perfection of all that we should be we call him perfect theology there are many of us there are many people who followed all kinds of people followed God's generals followed all of this I'm not saying there's, there's a place for mentorship and receiving from people and all of that and trusting the teachings you get. Are you listening to me? But I'm saying not above Christ himself. Paul himself needed to give his life to Christ. Any other person that wants to lead you to the Father outside of Jesus Christ will only mislead you. I repeat, any other person who wants to lead you to Christ aside from Jesus himself will mislead you so what are the conditions two conditions number one two conditions to lose your salvation rebellion number two idolatry these are the two biblical conditions I'm sorry I don't have time I have to rush these are the two biblical conditions that can cause a man to lose his salvation. Let me tell you what rebellion is. Look up. Rebellion is a willful, perpetual, and continuous um, violation of God's laws and principles. A willful, perpetual, continuous violation of God's principles in spite of the convictions of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Rebellion is not that I have a habit I'm struggling with and God is helping me. You know, it's, it's something I feel for instance. Let's assume, in, let's assume, cameraman, let's assume, hallelujah. Let's assume I have a problem sleeping around for instance. Alright? Then I'm sleeping around and doing every kind of thing. And I'm still a preacher. Are you listening to me? And every time I'm convicted in my spirit and it's an issue. It's, it's an issue. I cry about it. That's not rebellion. Are you listening to me? That's a wrong habit that needs the power of God. That's why we take our time to fix miracle services. Where people come and the strongholds are broken. That's why we keep feeding you with God's word. But rebellion is when it becomes a, a state of iniquity in my heart. Such that I'm not even repentant about it again. For instance like i've planned that after preaching for instance for instance that after preaching like this then uh, today is friday i'll go and cool off somewhere after 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 all the i mean all the stress of shouting and the rest i go and have a nice weekend with a lady i mean i'm preaching but it's it's in my heart i have planned it i have purposed it i know i'll do it in two weeks time i know i'll do it again another thing um, stealing all of these things these are acts of iniquity and rebellion you steal your roommates um, money and then when you steal the money you laugh about it and you are waiting for another opportunity to do it there's no the difference between rebellion and just having a challenge that God is helping you is that there is still the conviction of the Holy Spirit and that you are yielding to that conviction. Are you listening to me? So that Satan doesn't tell you, look, you are always doing this. You are going to hellfire. While you know that in your heart is a challenge. You are struggling. Paul himself had a struggle and is in heaven today. He said, the things that I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. But the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? It is for such that in Christ there is no condemnation. But when a man comes to a state of iniquity, iniquity, where it becomes an issue, let's assume that, for instance, I consult, let's assume 
all the power and the manifestation that are happening in this place there's some babalao agreement that is done somewhere I will not be surprised if there are people who believe that that's what we use in this place the guy and a young man be having how can young people be having word of knowledge prophecies man there's something <laughs> oh yes it's true that there's something but it's the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that's why we give him all the glory hallelujah praise God very quickly let's run so rebellion and then number two idolatry idolatry hear me friends idolatry will take any man to hell idolatry is putting in the position of jesus christ anything an idol an object that is not him there are many families who are half christians half traditional idolatry when the situation gets bad they run to one small uh, one small goddess with mirror and broom just lying somewhere in a secret room that only some of our fathers enter many ministers in this country who consult these idols and come out in the power of the idols and begin to minister with power and in quote signs and wonders nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth short having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity hallelujah i'll stop here for now on those issues the last thing i'll do before we pray is I want to read out to you from the word of God what every believer should have called your Christian statement of faith your creed a summary of what Jesus Christ left with the church are you listening to me I don't care what church you belong hear me and by the way let me say this I, I hope you know that of course this is the body of Christ but this is not a church an assembly as it were this is an apostolic meeting where god is changing people that's why we don't care what church you are coming from you are always welcome hallelujah catholic anglican celestial um guru maharaji um anyone you are welcome we welcome you in the name of jesus so long as you are open to hear the truth and what I'm about to tell you now is not the doctrine of any church or any ministry. It's the truth of God's word. The foundation of God is built upon this. Are you ready to listen? Number one. The Bible is the inspired word of God. No matter what church, what doctrine, what denomination, what sect, if you truly name the name of Christ, then let's begin to straighten out some things. I've, I've spoken about a few faulty foundations. There's no need going into them. Um, my job is not to show the things that are wrong, but to put in structure the things that are right. So the Bible is the inspired word of God. A revelation from God to mankind. And hear me, the Bible has supreme authority over all matters of faith and conduct if you are a christian that is in the family of god then this is one tenant you must put i'm telling you the teachings the foundations of the lord the bible has the supreme authority that means the end of all arguments is the bible the word of god the bible stands supreme to the doctrine of any man denomination generation including joshua selma the bible is superior to eni superior to koinonia superior to your church superior to your pastor superior to me superior to every apostle every prophet superior to god's generals superior to paul philip nathaniel i don't care superior to anybody the bible the infallible irrefutable word of god are the foundations of the Lord. 
second timothy if you want a scripture on that second timothy 3 verse 15 to 16 and then first peter chapter 2 verse 2 very quickly so that we can pray briefly We're out of time number two that there is one true god there is one true god who has revealed himself in three persons the father the son and the holy spirit look up say after me the father say it the father the son and the third one is not you the third one is the holy spirit say after me the father the son and the holy spirit coexisting in unity it's a mystery we do not fully understand but we are sure of that's why it's called faith are you listening to me and so i've had all kinds of teachings trying to explain the trinity there is only so much that the word of god has to tell us about this and we believe faith is that you believe even when you do not see and we know i know it's true i know it's true hallelujah there are a few places in the scripture that reveal that the father the son and the holy spirit is there for instance in the encounter of philip when he was about being stoned the bible says philip was full of the holy spirit so the holy spirit was living in him hallelujah and the bible says he looked up to heaven and saw the father seated and jesus standing at his right hand so we see the trinity there hallelujah and then in the baptism of jesus we see that jesus the son the word who had become flesh was standing and the holy spirit coming and a voice speaking from heaven hallelujah so there's no point doubting the existence of the trinity number three thank you lord jesus salvation ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Look up. christ is the only begotten okay no 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 listen look up christ is now not the only begotten son christ was the only begotten son when he walked upon the earth right now he's the firstborn among we the brethren so correct that in your statement of faith christ is not the only begotten son of the father otherwise you would say god has lied in the world behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called as many as received him he gave them power to be called so we are joined Hallelujah. God incarnate called Jesus Christ. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Listen, the foundation on which the Christian faith is built. Born of the Virgin Mary. Born of the Virgin Mary. It's important to know that the word of God, Da Vinci Code notwithstanding, cast all those nonsense out of your house. fully God and he was fully man. Jesus perfectly revealed and did the will of the father. Taking upon himself the demands and the necessities of human nature and identifying himself completely with mankind but without sin. It's important to believe that Jesus died. It's important to believe that he died on a cross. A train didn't kill him. He died on a cross. That's what the Bible says. You, we are re-examining our foundations. He died on the cross. He was buried in a tomb, a virgin tomb, belonging to Joseph of Arimathea. Hallelujah. And on the third day, he rose again. He rose again. You must believe that Jesus Christ rose again. There are many believers that have not really taken our time to find out whether they believe or not. You must believe. And that Jesus Christ is today seated at the right hand of the Father. The right hand of authority. According to scriptures, making intercession for the saints. And the Bible says that we are seated with him. It's very, very important. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He enables us to understand the truth. He draws sinners to God and convicts them of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He calls them to Jesus Christ. 
he effects the new birth and the holy spirit dwells in all born again believers if you're truly born again in christ whether you feel it or not the holy spirit lives in you he bestows the spiritual gifts by which the persons can serve god he's the one who cultivates true christian character he comforts believers his presence in the life of the christian serves to bring the believer into the fullness of the statue of christ the holy spirit assures us of salvation he enlightens our minds and empowers the believer in worship in evangelism in service hallelujah it's important i'm reading some of these things so that our, our hearts be founded properly that it is by grace that men are saved through faith it is not of works that's what the bible says the grace of god brings salvation through the preaching of the repentance of the word of god and faith toward the lord jesus christ hear me it is only faith in the lord jesus christ that brings people to salvation one more time i repeat it is only through faith in the name of the lord jesus christ and his finished work that men are saved hallelujah there are two doctrines that jesus christ left with the church the doctrine of the water baptism and the doctrine of the communion both are supposed to be doctrines that reinforce and bring us into the understanding of our unity identifying with him in death and being alive the ordinance of baptism by a burial with christ should be observed now it's important it's a doctrine that christ left with the church the doctrine of water baptism so it's a healthy one it's encouraged but it's not the condition to go to heaven there is nowhere in scripture that says your going to salvation is tied to whether you are baptized in water or not however it is important we observe it because it's a doctrine and an ordinance that jesus left with the church and so part of our compliance as being obedient citizens of the of, of the kingdom is to observe it however we have records of people like the man on the cross who are not baptized but jesus said this day you will be with me in paradise hallelujah and we have records of many babies who died and are in heaven thank you jesus it's a symbolism of our identification with jesus in death and that we are alive with him today the lord's supper consists of bread and any fruit of the vine it's a symbol of expression our sharing of our divine nature with christ a memorial of his suffering and death and we are encouraged to observe this until he comes the baptism of believers is the unique work of the holy ghost an evidence of which is the speaking of other tongues oh brothers and sisters believe this please believe this has nothing to do with Pentecostalism as the Holy Spirit gives them utterance the scriptures teach a life of holiness without which no man will see the Lord by the power of the Holy Ghost we are able to obey that command that we should be holy for his holy entire sanctification is the will of God for all believers and should be earnestly pursued by walking in obedience to God's word not the religious practice that people are doing another foundational truth the church is the body of Christ look at me not your church the church are you hearing me your church is only they are only members of that universal body because there are many ministries that behave as if they are the only ones who represent the church we are not given that kind of devilish ministry the church it's the word ecclesia is the word that is translated in english catholic the universal church the bride of christ one man is not sufficient to be the bride of christ the church in our fullness and our unity we represent the bride of christ hallelujah the church is the body of christ the habitation of god 
through the spirit with divine appointments for the fulfillment of the great commission and hear me every believer born of the spirit is an integral part of the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven sorry there's no time to give you all of the scriptures any divinely ordained ministry look at me any ministry apostolic prophetic any assembly any church any denomination hear me is provided for a twofold purpose number one world evangelization and number two the equipping and the edification of the body so any ministry i don't care what the name of the ministry is that is not committed to the ministry of soul winning and the building and the edification of the body with whatever kind of revelation prosperity divine health miracles holiness faith any ministry that claims to be called of god and is not directly involved in soul winning and the building and edification of the church needs to go back and check their foundation we're rounding up that deliverance from sickness is provided for in the atonement and is the privilege of all believers we have made it look as if this is a pentecostal reality it's part of the realities of the death of christ by whose stripes he were healed healing and deliverance is part of the blessings of redemption isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5 ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 13. then the resurrection hear me there is something called rapture ha. and there is something called the resurrection of the dead are you listening to me i don't care what message you have been preached let no man deceive you there is something called the resurrection of the dead and a day will come when believers will exit this earth a day will come and guess what is coming very very soon whether you believe it or not will not stop it everybody in hellfire today is a believer the only issue is that they believe too late so whether you want to believe it or not there is a place called heaven a real place called heaven there is another place called hell both of them are real places there is yet another place called the lake of fire and hear me in hell today there are people who left this morning relocated from this morning they woke up with you but right now and guess what they can hear what we are preaching oh yes it is given unto them because the rich man in hell said oh let send Lazarus to go and preach to my brothers so that they will not come here and he said they have Moses and the prophet Moses represents the law because that was the dispensation of the law they have the law and the prophets if they will not listen even if he comes they will not listen but god has granted our generation there are several people that have come back from the dead have gone to heaven and have gone to hell shouting that there is a place called heaven and hell. and many of us have allowed our westernization to cheat us there is a real place say after me there is a place called heaven and there is a place called hell The resurrection of those who have fallen asleep in Christ and their translation together with those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord is imminent and is the blessed hope of the church. The devil and his angels, the beast and the false prophets and whoever is not found in the book of life shall be consigned to everlasting punishment in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone this is what the bible calls the second death revelations 19 verse 20 revelations 20 verse 10 to 15. soon we are going to take a series on the end times in theology we call it eschatology there is a promise of a new heaven and a new earth when all of this church age is wrapped 
2 Peter 3 13 and Revelation 21 verse 1 there are many more but this brothers and sisters for time's sake encapsulates the foundation of the Lord the basis on which every believer's faith must be built upon whether you wear trousers or you don't wear trousers whether your hair is veiled or not veiled whether you speak in tongues or you don't speak in tongues whether you believe in miracles or you don't believe in miracles if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died and resurrected you are not a member of God's family and guess what there is only one place hellfire Emmanuel all the world is calling on me Emmanuel when you come again Emmanuel the church will see your holy face Emmanuel when you come to it I'll sing it one more time then we'll pray Emmanuel all the world is calling your name Emmanuel when you come prosperity believe in holiness believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ believe in the grace of God and in his mercy believe in his power to keep you believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit believe in praying in tongues believe in the edification of the spirit believe in the salvation of souls believe in faith let your foundation be strong. Believe that it takes more than prophetic accuracy for you to know that a man is truly of God. Believe that the gifts of the Spirit is not necessarily equal to spiritual maturity. Believe that you are a partaker of His divine nature. Believe that there is no condemnation for you. That no man can the Holy Spirit convicts men but he does not condemn Romans chapter 8 verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation maybe there was yesterday but there is therefore now and the Bible says the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets bringing the church into an understanding of faith so that we are not tossed here and there by every wind of doctrine Believe that the word of God is above every prophetic revelation. It's above every spiritual encounter. That even if you have a dream and you claim you saw Jesus Christ, if what he told you and how he led you is not consistent with the word, what you saw was not Jesus Christ. Believe in the immutable counsel of God's will. Hate poverty. Believe in prosperity as the package and the blessings of God. Run away from the religiosity of the Lord. Try to be right by your own strength. Try to be holy by your strength. None of these things will help. There are many people who have been struggling because they are trying to live by their strength. The Bible says, for by the arm of flesh shall no man be Jude 24 says that um, it says that God is able to keep you that is able to keep you from falling is God that keeps men from falling there are many of you who are angry right now because somebody walked up to you and said I saw in the spirit that in one week you will die don't you know that the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy the person may not be lying but I need you to know that he's telling you so that you will pray not to lie down and say let it happen you must believe that you have the power 
like Joshua used to say, that in everyone is a prophetic dimension. You don't need to be a prophet to speak the word of God. Take the word of God and put it in your mouth. The word of God doesn't just reveal the future, it creates one. These are the foundations. We are examining the foundation of the Lord. And our faith must be built.
This is what the Bible calls the foundation of the Lord. Rise up on your feet. Without love, when you hear that a member of a 
a ministry or a member of a church or denomination for, we rejoice. What a shame to the church. And tonight, we are praying and saying, Lord, let the workings of the Lord come out to me. That the joy of a member of the body will be the joy of everybody. That the fall of a member will bring everybody to live together. When the love of God is at work in our life, when we tear down all of this world, we will see the greatest revival. Go ahead and pray for yourself. an anointing you can partake of the grace that has made a man to see and you will see the same thing the Lord began to deal with us yesterday on hosting his power we're still going to explore along power and impartation 
God began to adjust our understanding to see and understand the dynamics of true spiritual power. Isaiah chapter 35. My assignment tonight is first and foremost to help us by the Spirit understand the value of spiritual empowerment. Because until you recognize the value for a thing, the, the energy to pursue is not there. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll read the first six verses. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it the excellency of camel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord and the excellency of our god verse 3 it says strengthen ye the weak hands it says and confirm the feeble knees verse 4 say to them who are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. As a result, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. And the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out. And streams in the desert. The Bible paints a of what can happen to a person and an environment when the power of God is introduced. Many believers have not been trained to see the value of spiritual empowerment. For many believers, spiritual empowerment is, is, is an elective that you choose if you are interested in doing ministry. So if you do not have any passion for ministry, it's unnecessary, it's a nuisance. All I need is just the word but the word did not make any meaning until the word was empowered you are not a blessing until you are empowered spiritually you read from genesis to revelation there was no one who had capacity to do god good without god anointing him god will make a man Build that man. Teach that man the systems of the kingdom. And then when all is said and done, among the many things, he will grant access to his anointing. I hope you know that God's power, God's anointing, is not the same anointing that God works with, is what he gives you. So that your possibilities can match. Because man does not have in himself the capacity to produce God's dimension of results. If it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. If it's not marvelous, it was your doing. You don't clap for me for walking. It's human to walk. There's nothing supernatural as it were about walking. But when you begin to manifest a dimension not given to men, it proves that there was an energy that was outsourced. No one was allowed to serve in the temple without empowerment. No matter how silly the responsibility was, you needed empowerment. No matter how skilled you were, every time God would call a man, out of whatever it is that he does, they must be empowered. Including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her carrying Jesus for nine months did not empower her. She had to join the 120 to wait until the spirit was it not the same spirit that put jesus in her womb but that did not empower her the bible is full of stories of people who were absolutely weak their humanity was so glaring but not for too long at a point in their life and in their experience they had a strange encounter with the spirit of the living god then they were anointed and things turned around in their lives. There is no man of God 
who can produce God's dimension of results and be a blessing just being a wonderful humane human being there has to be a translation by the power of God are we together it is very very important Zechariah chapter 4 please and verse 6 the prophet is speaking here Zechariah 4 and verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of God unto Joshua Selman saying not by might human strength nor by human power but it is by my spirit excelling in your business not by might nor by power but by my spirit doing the kind of ministry that will bring glory to jesus not by might nor by power getting a job not by mouth nor by power being favored not by might nor by power are you getting what i'm saying breaking a chain that was there before you were born there were people stronger than you that chain kept them there it is not by might nor by power but by my spirit you must learn early to give up on the strength of the flesh it will embarrass you and continue to recycle pain to your life for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail when a spirit is oppressing you there is no machine that will diagnose it machines don't diagnose spirits they diagnose the effect of their presence but there is a word that is a discerner is sharper than any two-edged sword In Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy, we know this theologically to be, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, in other words, this is the object, the motive, the motivation behind that. He had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. Then it says he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives the opening of the prison to them that are bound every time i read this scripture when i get to that prison part it touches me who are these men in prison because they still walk around yet the bible says they are not only tied they are in prison to open the prison to them that are bound verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Then to comfort all them that mourn. Three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Look at this. You can give a man beauty. You can say, bring your ashes. I will change it for you. Like you tell somebody, bring dollars. I will give you naira. You actually can be anointed to see a man's life. You are not praying now and say god change his life it is within my power there is an agency that can turn your life around that men can receive something from heaven that stops them from being human you can look at a man with ashes my brothers and my sisters and within your power according to the measure of grace you look at that man and say bring these ashes i want to give you beauty like an award like an exchange and you say go you've had beauty he will doubt it until his result shows he steps out of that place and all of a sudden the scenario of his chains and all this begin to change and all that he sees is the glory of god to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness look how men can become blessings to men that something can come upon your life when you see men mourning you don't counsel you don't sympathize you tell them i see you wearing a garment it's only expressed in your tears let me take that garment away and you can give them a garment of praise That they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. 
God wants to be glorified through the empowerment of the saints. Please listen to me. It takes spiritual power to reign. It takes more than good intention. It takes more than good preaching. It takes more than a sincere heart. The days that we live in are evil days. Jesus himself revealed to us that there is something called the hour of darkness. The hour of darkness. Psalm 63. The value showing you and then we'll tie up a few things and pray tonight. You must desire sincerely the power of God. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. In my flesh longs for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Why am I seeking you? To see thy power. And thy glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. Lord, I'm seeking you. There is there are things around my life that I know only your power can answer. I've tried to use human wisdom, I've tried to use certain things, but I know that I need to outsource an ability that is higher than me. Ah, happy is the man who is trusted with God's power. You will watch life come under you to Christ but when you are not empowered you can watch your family members go through the things that happen. let me tell you this let me tell you this you see everything that happens in our lives can be likened to movie actors behind every movie I don't I don't do movie but at least I know a little about it that when you are acting a movie or drama there's someone called a director correct you may never have the privilege of seeing him he is at the back scheming things what you watch is the action but there is a director you slap this one twice no no according to my script you should slap him three times that means that behind the various scenarios of our lives there are systems and spirits orchestrating it the disfavor the closed door the unnecessary hardship the lack of church growth regardless of grace we focus many times on the events the events are like probabilities they are infinite behind every one of them are these spirits and the bible says how all inspiring are your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves Hallelujah. I once counseled an elderly man, very old man, and while I sat down listening to him, he barely spoke and he started crying. And I said, sir, just talk to me. What is the issue? And then he told me that all through his life, he has not known what people call victory. That this thing they call victory is strange to him. It's like a man being pregnant. He says, I, I, I don't know anything about victory. I said, why? He said he was never taught some of these things. And he was angry because his life refused to change. This kingdom is a kingdom where in many cases it is the power of God that speaks. And until the power of God speaks like the roaring of a lion some challenges will not let you go please listen very carefully i shared with you in this place koinonia about a woman who was pregnant one time and then this woman would go to bed and literally see monkeys all around her pastor monkeys and she gave birth to a child and the child came out hairy physically like a monkey dead 
how many people have been prayed for here with hiv ask them how they got it they said they came to me in a dream with an injection said this is hiv injected you in the realm of the spirit and it appeared physically that means you can change something in the realm of the spirit and then wait for it like a movie too to happen physically if it started in the realm of the spirit it must be adjusted there it doesn't make sense to come from the realm of the spirit and then you adjust it physically some things will never change with counseling hear me some things will never change with time some things will never change with advice you will need a head on collision with the power of god there are families where nobody has risen to any level the last person who tried to rise there because of the little revelation here and there that he got when he was almost crossing it drew him back power the power of the holy ghost jesus knew the necessity of this he said tarry in jerusalem don't make a mistake of leaving jerusalem to start anything without empowerment i've given you the lecture but all that lecture will be nonsense if there is no power i just gave you theory but what you are going to be seeing there oh dear had they not listened to jesus you would meet a man called bar jesus you would meet a young girl who was a sorcerer and she will show you word of knowledge that you are not seeing listen let me tell you the world that is out there is not exactly ignorant it's just that the knowledge is demonic and diabolic you know many times when we teach like this even me i get uncomfortable sometimes because everything i say looks like a lie except that it is true hmm. it is true it is true Bishop Oyedepo gave a story that one time the church would not grow for a long time regardless of the prayers that were offered and then they were fasting just like this Lord why is the church not growing and according to him he said the Spirit of the Lord asked him to go out and then he checked and saw that there was a blindfold over that ministry and he cursed it in the name of Jesus and it rolled like a curtain from that time increase began to come there are people every good thing you do is misunderstood it's not normal a man was begging the king called it rape there are spirits that make good things evil you come for somebody's program to help him they say uh -huh, they have come you don't come and they say ah something is wrong is a spirit let me tell you when the devil wants to trap you down only god can deliver you because anything you do will lead to the same result they box jesus with a question that both yes and no will put him in trouble it was not the issue of answering correctly or not i believe in the power of god i believe in the power of god listen let me tell you there are many things you have discussed it's time to bring them face to face with god's power you need the empowerment of the holy spirit michael chapter 3 and verse 8 but truly i am full of power by the spirit of the lord i am full of power by the spirit of the lord I am full of power for exploits in the kingdom and that by the spirit of the lord i am full of power by the spirit of the lord this is what happened to jesus he was filled with the holy ghost but not with power and when he was done fasting the bible says and he returned in the power of the holy spirit This conference would not have done us justice if it leaves us with just information without power it takes power to change your situation it takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life just because God said it does not mean it will happen there is an energy there is an agency behind 
He says his divine power has given us. His word authorizes his power to move. The power will not move until the word authorizes it. But when the word authorizes it and the power is not there, it will still be of non effect. The dynamics of manifestation is this. Listen, it is not just the union of the word and the power alone. It is that the word is what gives authority. And then the power is what manifests physically to create the change. God's energy, God's ability. Turning people's lives around. Changing people's situations. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed, don't get too used to these scriptures, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about as a result of the power doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. This is a generation that needs the power of God. There are so many things that continue to challenge believers. We need a manifestation of the power of God. In one day, the issue of loyalty to God was settled when power came. Elijah said, let's stop arguing. Go up the mountain. Let's go to Mount Carmel. That the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And then he gave the prophets of Baal room to begin to do everything that they were doing the bible says from morning up until night do you know the highest dimension of their prayer was sacrifice when everything failed they started cutting themselves he said pray louder maybe he's sleeping and Baal could not answer them and then when it was the time of the evening sacrifice there was a time when the angel of the lord will come to the earth angels are not on the earth just all the time they will respond to prayers but there are activities on earth that make for the manifestation of the angelic do you know how haman got the date to destroy israel i hope you know there was a date haman did not just say to destroy god's people carelessly through divination a spiritual permutation was done and the exact date was there that means every day is not conducive for everything this is where spiritual intelligence comes in her man through divination found out the exact day the same way there are divine appointments there are also appointments of darkness i had a man of god share a very touching story and when i heard that story it really really blessed me he said there was a lady who was about to travel she missed her flight she felt so bad and cried that he, she missed her flight only for her to find out about maybe a, a few hours ago that the plane crashed the family members were perplexed when they published the names of the people the name of the daughter was not there and they said so what happened she missed the flight and so she went to a train the train still crashed those kinds of people are appointed to die so it doesn't matter whether it's through plane or through this the devil will haunt you until what happens happens just when you think you are done with one breakthrough here is something but then it says to appoint unto them that mourn the same way that you can put a date to a man's breakthrough and call it today you can call something that should happen next week and give it a date today by the anointing samaria was never supposed to be delivered the prophet gave the date for the deliverance it was he, listen Elisha was not revealing something that would happen anyway and maybe he was just privy to an advanced information no he said by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow if he didn't say the tomorrow will come and the cry will continue 
and they will eat the child, the other child that they were arguing about. Do you know how many people's lives you will save when you are anointed? Do you know how many people you will save from going down the grave? Do you know how many people you will lift for going down the grave? There are many people today in the grave who had no business going there. If you're a minister here, please listen to me. We're in the days of his power. If you lack genuine spiritual power, please leave ministry. Just quietly leave ministry. You can find another ministry and help them. But I'm telling you the days that we live in will require genuine spiritual power. The distinguishing factor will be the power of God. Because people will come with burdens that no level of intelligence can solve. Paul said, and I, when I came to you, he said, remember Paul was not a dull man. So he was not trying to trivialize knowledge. He says, but when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power that your faith may not rest upon the wisdom of man, but upon the power of God. That you carry the power of the Holy Spirit like a drug and enter your house with it. You don't need to pray. Just enter. And all of a sudden, the foundations of your family begins to shake. What is going on in this family? There is a shaking. What dreams are we suddenly having? It's because someone who represents the ark entered that house. Akabarutasiakata. One week after your coming, suddenly three promotions without your prayer. One week after your coming, a strange infirmity that each people in your family gives way. This is proof that God is with you. Let me tell you this. The world is truly tired of our stories. Are we together now? And the impatience continues to grow. We need a generation of men and women, not just preachers. Men and women who understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of you are seated here right now. Buffeted by all kinds of challenges. And for many people, they think that the answer to those things, maybe is just some nice discussion with an intelligent man of God. No. There are times that you need the power of God. Some of you join the queue sometimes to see me. And while you are talking, I just say, it's okay. Don't worry. You are tired. Let me explain. I said, it's okay. I know what the problem is. No matter what other examples you will give, is the same spirit. Like you tell a doctor, the other day I fell down. Let me tell you the scenario that he said, no, it's epilepsy. He said, no, let me tell you. He said, I found a problem. He said, Even if you say you fell from a bridge, it's still epilepsy. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's God's ability. It's Hallelujah. This is why we are gathered tonight. This is why we continue to press. Listen. Joshua Selman cannot be in every home. Joshua Selman cannot be in every office. Joshua Selman cannot be in every school. Joshua Selman cannot be everywhere. There is a problem if he's everywhere. You are supposed to be an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom within the region that you are in. That means that when someone from the regions you have come from is contemplating and say ah i should come for koinonia but maybe i'm challenged financially and the rest you say i bring you good news 
that which is there is here here by the spirit he said this is that 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 the prophet spoke about this is it again this is that what is the problem i've been trying to see apostle why because things are not working in my family and then one word one word from you will open the gates this is what god is making and it has nothing to do with being a man of god or a woman of god by the time you carry the grace for favor and someone just comes and shakes you good morning sir and he thought he just shook a man and then he leaves and for that day he records breakthroughs in his life he will look for you and say please shake me again i don't know what you did i don't know what happened but you are like the ark of god in the house of obed edom it was dropped there just to let it be under the care of obed edom and in three months 90 days the life of a man changed because something was introduced jonah carried a spirit into a boat and people were about to die Jonah didn't pray. Jonah didn't preach. Jonah didn't talk. He was even sleeping. You don't have to be awake for grace to walk. Jonah was sleeping. Yet the anointing was working. That you can turn a man's life around by the spirit bringing glory to the name of the lord as an evidence a testament of the power of god but ye shall receive power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 after that the holy ghost is come upon you you shall receive power not stories power i'm a businessman yes sir power I'm a politician. Yes, sir. You need more power as a politician than a preacher. A preacher has prayer ban. A politician does not have it. They can cover for you before you go for a retreat. But you are a politician. They hit you once you are gone. Listen very carefully. Let me tell you we are living in evil days. It is true. And you must sustain the stamina the spiritual stamina the empowerment how about wealth and increase remember the teaching that i did that you want to prosper and even your soul to prosper and the devil says no way you choose one you can't have both either your soul prospers or your pocket prospers and you say no in god's economy we prosper as our souls prosper you don't sell your soul to prosper the world's way is that you sell your soul to prosper that was the exchange that was happening at the mountain give me your soul what shall it profit when it talks of profit the commodity of exchange is a man's soul and the world like pure water and hundred naira what shall it profit you if you use this to buy this the world soul trade by butter give me your soul i will give you access to the cosmos is god speaking to someone let me tell you something it takes the force of god's power for things to change the force of god's power and yesterday we spoke about one of the keys Let me just talk very briefly one area and then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We spoke about one area, death. If you remember very carefully, that the price is death. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Thank you, my dear. Proverbs 23 and verse 26 my son first instruction give me your heart we dealt with that yesterday so we're switching to the next one and let 
thine eyes observe my ways. He's teaching a man a secret here. Your eyes, your heart. Your eyes, your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. Listen to me. It's an anthem in this ministry that there is a relationship between your spiritual understanding and the manifestation of spiritual power. You know, most times people say there is power in the word of God and it's not a lie. But the dynamic, most people do not understand. They think that the word of God is just like a charm or a genie. And the moment you have it or recite it, it has power. No! No! In the parable of the sower, Satan came and carried the word and he was not shaking. He didn't die. He carried the word. Only God knows where he went with it. When Jesus finished fasting, the word finished fasting, Satan appeared and was talking to the word with power on him. He didn't shake under the anointing. He even held Jesus and took him to a mountain. He held the word with power on it. That the word of God can be made of non-effect. There is a system that releases the power of the word. Are we together now? The word of God is a compendium of his ways, his methodology, his systems. Hidden in the systems, when you understand and engage accordingly, then you release the power that lies therein. This is very, very important. For most people, we just think that the word of God is in the recitation of it like a memory verse. Or in the chanting of it like a charm. You know how traditionalists would chant something in front of a masquerade. No. No. The sons of Sceva were speaking what would be in the similitude of scripture. But the demons did not leave. You have to understand this. And let your eyes observe my ways. That means that every part I walk is a pattern you should pay attention to. Observe my ways, how restoration came. Observe my ways, how speed came. Observe my ways, why Satan could not defeat me. He said, be observant. Before you speak, ponder, sila, think by the wisdom of the spirit. Obtain grace and understanding to discern. You can successfully replace the word observe there with the word discern. Discern my ways. We came from the same background. What did you do that suddenly brought favor? Observe my ways. There was something I did that the natural eyes cannot see. We were born the same day. What has happened to you that you have such an investment of the spirit? Observe my ways. When you give me your heart, observe my ways. My path are the paths of pleasantness. Observe my ways. There is a way that cement writes, the Bible says, unto a man. He says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way, the authorized methodology for results. It is my path. When you follow it, the results are guaranteed. The primary assignment of any man of God, after getting people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, is to stimulate spiritual enlightenment and understanding by opening them to the ways of god the methodology the modus operandi please listen very carefully things don't just work because they are written in the bible things don't just work because god said they should work behind his speakings are his systems listen to me beyond words you have to see the lines that connect this is where the spirit of revelation, of wisdom, and of understanding comes. You have to pray for understanding. The utopian Enoch had his Bible open. He was just coming from church on a chariot on his way to go back home. And the spirit of the Lord took Philip and says to join that chariot. And then he even saw that he was reading the messianic prophecy. He said, who is this man? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Was it he more about someone? He says, understandest what thou readest. How can I accept some man teach me? 
And then he began to explain. To make all men see. There is a grace that as the exegesis of scripture is as the bread is broken, your eyes suddenly see. This is it. This is where my family is. I've seen it. The word of God becomes for you like a compass. It shows you where you are and where you need to be. And when you have eaten and found it, it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to your soul. Behind the results that we seek is not only the word of God, but an understanding of the system allocated for it. Please listen to me. Just because the anointing produced results in an area does not mean it will produce results in an area. The anointing flows through the channel of your understanding to produce that result. And so the same anointing will be profitless if you are barren of spiritual understanding. Imagine with me for a moment that you have a tap that has potentials to gush out a lot of water. And then you have a host. You can use it and you can guarantee that a garden will be watered. What waters the garden is not the host. But without the host, the water will not reach the garden. That host is your understanding. That is the basis of your faith. Faith is the confidence that you get based on God and the integrity of his word and the action you take to validate that confidence. It comes through understanding. Understanding is a real miracle. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. And he breathed upon them. He opened their understanding. We need to have a lot of understanding for the results that we seek to command. And I have dished mysteries upon mysteries in this kingdom. One of the strange mysteries, the mystery of praise, the secret to exemption. Aye. Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed. There is a kind that goeth by praise. There is a kind that goeth by fasting. There are many kinds. There are dynamics of their operation. And the Bible says Paul and Silas after praying they praise. And it says all doors open. Not some. All doors open. Praise can open doors. That a man can, he says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. We've had testimonies in this house where people will lock themselves and write challenges that only God can solve. And sing praises and dance like fools in the presence of that request. And by morning, God will say, you can't do this for me. Was it not a girl's dance that removed a prophet's head? What Jezebel could not do, Herodias, the daughter, did it in a dance. Dance during a man's birthday. He said, what will you want? Even to half of my kingdom. Consulted with her evil and wicked mother. Who said, remove the head of that prophet. And his head went for it. Do you know the mysteries allocated for the results that you seek? Praise, 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 praise in a dance, not in a complaint. Praise in a dance. Ah, madam, you're going to lose this pregnancy. From what we are seeing, there is problem. Praise in a dance. Your certificate, everywhere you have taken for a job, they say, sorry, sir, it's too late. Sorry, you are too old. Sorry, you are too young. Sorry, it's women we are looking for. You are a man. Sorry, it's men we are looking for. You are a woman. Sorry, we are looking for Yoruba people. What tribe? I'm Hausa. Sorry, it's Northerners we are looking for. You carry that thing and bring it before God. And say, where is the God of Israel? Where is my job, oh God? Let my dance bring it. You can dance like someone in a bar. There's no miracle for that one. But you can dance the dance with understanding. Lord, I'm dancing before the God who can change my life. I'm dancing before the one who has all power. How about the mystery of prayer? 
God's authorized system of legislature over a territory. You don't legislate by discussion. No. When you want to enforce the value system of God over a spiritual climate, the mechanism allocated for that is prayer. You fortify a spiritual border through the ministry of prayer. He spake a parable. Are you learning something now? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. The mystery that gives you direction over affliction is prayer. It's in prayer that you understand what is going on. You don't pray after you have understood what is happening. Whatever you understand can be aberrated by your pain. It is prayer that purifies the revelation. Is any man afflicted? Not let him understand. Let him pray. Lord, I don't know what is happening, but let prayer filter this thing. And you lock yourself and while you are praying, suddenly the maze, the purity of the revelation comes to you. Prayer. When it was time for Esther to deliver the people, she said, set yourself, Israel, fast. I will also fast with you as I go to the king. It was a matter of life and death. There are mysteries in this kingdom. One of it is the mystery of your seed. Huh. The mystery of your seed. Now, I know that it may have been abused here and there, but very few believers understand the power of seed faith. It's not just some Pentecostal gibberish to collect money out of people. Whoever manipulates people, he has God there to judge him. But let me tell you, there are times you are tired of a dimension and you can connect a seed to your faith huh? and smash every Goliath down to pieces with your faith. Seeds have worked wonders in my life. Seeds have worked wonders in this ministry. There was a year I've shared with you where God gave an instruction to sow everything to empty every money in this ministry. Everything. That's suicidal for a man of God to do. Very suicidal. If your ministry is just a prayer group, you can afford that risk. Because whatever it is, the people will understand. And with careless, reckless abandonment, we did that. And in one week, it didn't pass seven days. God did a wonder that till forever will not recover from. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, a time will come when you have to keep quiet and let your speed continue speaking. It's a mystery in the spirit. The prophetic is a mystery that you engage under certain circumstances. Every time the Bible talks of restoration, it does not talk of anything other than the prophetic. Read your Bible. Every time there was a loss in the Bible, it was the ministry of the prophetic that brought it back. Whether it was the axe head, whether it was the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, no matter what it was, the moment the prophetic came, then there would be restoration. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Is God speaking to you tonight? So every challenge that we have, that we stand with tonight, is at the mercy of the power of God, but released through the host of your understanding. Listen to me. It's not just about power, power, fall on me. Mm -mm. When power falls on you, it's the same thing like splashing water everywhere. It must be coordinated through understanding to be channeled to the area where the results are needed. Just wanting power at random without understanding is the same way you fetch water and just throw it everywhere and expect it to coordinate itself into your mouth. There is a cup that fetches that water and it doesn't go to your head, it doesn't go to your legs. You direct it where that water needs to go. When you are bathing, even if it's a shower, you don't stand anywhere and it touches you. You position the water. It is not water, but assignment to know where your head is. 
or to know where your face is or to know where the soap is is their assignment to release water is your assignment to work with your plumber and make sure that water is in a position that can get to every part of your body so the situation happening with you in that bathroom the water body is not aware there was something about the way you turn the whole thing and it's not reaching you understanding gives value to power most people have power but they don't have understanding so it cannot be coordinated to produce results we like power because of the charismatism that comes around it but the efficiency of the power of god is produced on the platter of understanding there's water in a well please help me with this look at this every well has water but you don't stand in front of a well and bend your head down to drink it you do that you are going to fall down and die the water that was supposed to bless you is now the reason for your death but the water was packaged in a bottle and the bottle the person that designed this bottle designed it to enter your mouth that's why this is not where you drink from are we together he looked at the size of your mouth and made sure that the bottle will be able to enter there. Now the water can benefit you because the channel gave it coordination. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are many people, what you may need may not be more power. Truly the power is resident within you. But understanding is what will give it, will channel it accordingly to produce the breakthrough that you need. And I have seen this again and again with many believers. They are not knowledgeable on spiritual things. They lack spiritual intelligence. And yet they want the power of God. The divine power of God is like electricity. But you channel it to do the things for you that it wants to do. Trying to receive fresh air from a keyboard is not profitable. Yet it's the same power that powers a keyboard that powers this so i must understand the dynamics of its conversion to know if i want fresh air it's a fan i look for it's still the same divine power it is the same divine power but sometimes it is not expressed in prayer it's expressed in a dance sometimes it's not just expressed in a dance it's expressed in agreement Sometimes it's not just expressed in agreement, it's expressed as you quote scripture and speak to the air. Sometimes it is expressed through submitting to a prophetic grace. Regardless of the dimensions, it is still his divine power that makes for that result. Listen to this. Tomorrow is our miracle service. And many of you see the things that happen in the miracle service. And sometimes you wonder, why do you have to do this? There are times that I may call on specific people and minister. And then at the same time, minister to everybody over the same case again. You see, it is his divine power. But the system of operation, there are others. Until the worship team raises a song, they will not be blessed. The nature of their challenges will require worship. The power of God will flow through the instrument of worship. There are certain people that God's divine power will flow through creativity. When it has to do with wealth, his divine power does not flow through the channel of prayer. So if all you know is prayer, you will heal the sick but remain poor. His divine power is trapped by your bankruptcy of knowledge. You must give his power channels to flow through understanding the more you have spiritual understanding the more you are giving his divine power channels to flow to the various faculties of your life it matters that we have understanding i am powerful i don't doubt you but show me the understanding and i see how far the power can go my understanding is limited to the healing ministry that is the only area you will see the power of god you will continue to fast and more power will come but it will be directed towards that area the day you learn the economic principle of the kingdom you will see the power released there it was always there but your bankruptcy of understanding trapped it please get what i'm teaching you it will not do us much to just pray and pray and do impartation 
And then the area where you are trusting God for, maybe it's area of speed and promotion. But the only spiritual understanding you have is for restoration. The more you pray, the more you see things being restored. But promotion, you will not get it. And you wonder, God, can't you promote? He says, my power wants to move to the area of your promotion. But the host call understanding that would direct it is barren, unfruitful. And where that light came from was the hiding place of his power. I learned this in life and it changed my life. There were things I didn't know. And I didn't see the power of God in those areas. And for a long time, I would pray and fast and say, God, why? Until the Lord granted me understanding to know that the issue was not more power. The issue was the bankruptcy of spiritual enlightenment that will give it more capacity. Is God speaking to you? Imagine with me an octopus, right? That sea creature with many channels. That's how God wants your understanding to be. His divine power should not only touch your finances alone. It should not only touch this aspect. Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I believe with all my heart that there is enough power and grace to produce what you are looking for. Connect that power through your understanding to the problem you are looking for solution from. If what you want is restoration, then use the understanding of the prophetic to channel the power of God to that direction. If you keep praying and God has mercy on you, he will bring a prophet to help you. That's his way of having mercy on you. But he will not violate the system allocated for that breakthrough. Are we together? You want to be promoted in a job. The power of God will not only flow through favor. It will flow through competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business. Not prayerful in his business. Diligent in his business. He says he shall stand before kings. There is power in diligence. So when you become diligence, a dimension of God's power that never flowed will now start flowing through diligence. If you understand what I'm sharing tonight, you will see the knowledge dimension, the understanding dimension of the power of God. Otherwise, there is no need for knowledge when the anointing comes. What then is the value of spiritual enlightenment? If the anointing just generically solves problems. Why should you anoint me with oil? Then I study the Bible again. What am I looking for? I know what I'm looking for. I'm giving that grace. Channels. Ah, Those who you call wonders. When you see them, they are not like an octopus. They are like an animal with many, many hosts. So almost every area of their life can be touched with understanding. And the power of God. You see possibilities. That's what we came to do tonight. First, to receive more grace. But second, to say, Lord, this side has received your anointing. But this side, I'm trying to get this thing there. It's not working. What is the mystery that channels the power of God to this other area? Naaman was the king and the captain of the Syrian army. He was a valiant man. His discipline and diligence as a military man allowed certain levels of might to flow. But, but, if he knew that the prophetic would solve his problem, he would not be a leper till that time. It was because there was an information he did not know that kept him there. So God used a small slave girl to say, Sir, there is a way out of this. Ah, Tell somebody there is a way. Please prophesy to someone, say there is a way. It may not yet be captured in your curriculum of knowledge, but there is a way. There is a way. Do not use your limitation to conclude that God cannot move in that area. Because he can. Because he can. 
Because he can. Everything God says, listen to me, listen to me. When he releases it, the spirit of revelation will take that prophecy and the power in it and ensure that you have the understanding that connects you to that prophecy. This is how it works. This is how it works. So the more spiritually enlightened I am, it is not the enlightenment that produces result. The enlightenment activates my mind and gives the power of God a channel to flow through. Listen to me. Medical people will tell us many times that when a part of the body is beginning to deteriorate, sometimes it could be that there was a pinched nerve. Is that true? Sometimes it could be that something happened that is not allowing blood to flow because the distribution is that blood should flow all over your body but for some reason the heart is still pumping blood but something may happen to your vein or your artery or something and just try to create an interference an inhibition and for a long time a part of your body will not receive the supply of oxygen and blood and as a result it begins to die the heart is pumping but that leg is dying so it is the doctor's assignment through his knowledge to now create a system. And sometimes the relief is instant. Hmm. This is how it works. We went for a crusade many years ago. Anointed but poor. Yet his divine power was on us. That power was healing the sick. But the police station was waiting for us. Are we together? Couldn't the power stop the police station? It could. Except that the knowledge we needed to allow it get to our finances. It was not there. And then by the mercies of God, he brought that side. Look, when light comes to you, it's a miracle. When light comes to you, now the power of God can flow through you. Let me tell you why certain people's results become very powerful. There are many people who may not have the level of anointing yet, but while they are waiting, they continue to get vast knowledge. It's like you are preparing the host in advance. The day that anointing comes, miracles in different areas because they were prepared. I've not met a man of God that can anoint me, but while I wait, what is the key to wealth? While I wait, what is the key to speed? While I wait, so everything is prepared, waiting for the oil to come. Why did he tell the woman, borrow vessels? Borrow many. Borrow a financial vessel. Borrow a speed vessel. Borrow a, a favor vessel. Borrow a restoration vessel. If you return, pour the oil. The oil will come on the speed vessel. The oil will come on this vessel. You see, and when there was no more vessel, the oil not died, not changed, not became powerless. The oil limited by the containers. The prophet saw the woman. He said, your husband didn't know what this oil could do. Even as a prophet and he died. You can be a prophet, but when you don't have vessels, you can die. Please tell me we are going to pray. I came with a word from God to tell you. By the grace of God, this is a place of God's power. But power just resting. You can roll from that door to that door. And the power will be there. And the only channel you gave that power was your prayer life. So you will see increased prayer. You are praying again like never before. And you are saying, but God... Thank you for the grace for prayer. But I said that I want something in my family. And then you fast again. And then more prayer comes. And then when God wants to help you. He will do to you what he did to Martha. Sit down. And listen. Look at how Jesus. Do you know Jesus did not do an impartation service every day. But he did a teaching service. His entire training was 99% teaching. And then one day, when they had created channels, he said, now wait, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost came on them, they prophesied, there was word of knowledge, there was salvation, there was healing, because the channels were ready. My son, 
give me your heart and observe my ways. Observe my ways. Observe why two people were anointed and yet they could not manifest certain possibilities. This kingdom works through knowledge. The knowledge is not a charm. The dynamics of the operation is that every result is governed by his divine power. But his divine power flows through the host of understanding. The prophets desire to know some things. The power that was on them was enough to help them do certain things but they were denied god stopped them and limited them by hiding certain levels of knowledge so the anointing could not take them far to see some things that's why god says we are a chosen generation in other words people the prophets long to see these things they had the power but the understanding that will allow the power to take them that far was not there Man of God, my church is not growing. Yet people come and get healed and blessed through my life and they leave me. It is because his divine power is working through the dimension of understanding you have that allows for healing and allows for deliverance. But there is something about the grace that keeps that you do not know. All that you have given me, I have kept. By what mystery did he keep them? And none is lost except the son of perdition. And that that scripture may be fulfilled. There is a grace that keeps. If you have it, you will keep money. If you have it, you will keep children. If you have it, you will keep blessings. If you do not know the mystery that keeps things, you will have them and lose them. You can have breakthrough and lose breakthrough. You can have good things and leave them. Apostle, every time they pray, I get the result. But it leaves after two weeks. I know what is wrong. His divine power is still there. But there is an understanding you need to know about how things can be kept. Let me tell you how you keep things in the kingdom. You hand them over to God. When you hand over things to God, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. You can't keep that which is committed to you by your power. If they give you a bag of gold, you are running to Central Bank tomorrow. Whether the road is, is busy or not, you will smuggle your gold and run regardless of weather. CB and keep it for me. I trust my God, but not with respect to this gold. Please understand what I teach you. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray. For many years, I continue to ask, why are anointed people limited? I got one of the revelations that the anointing is in decrees and levels. And the anointing, just like currency, can only purchase the spiritual realities below its value. Every level of grace has a spiritual value akin to money. What one million will do is not what hundred thousand will do. If what you have is hundred thousand, you can only buy things from hundred thousand and below. If it's a card, you will not even buy hundred thousand, you must keep something small. So, if all the anointing you have is to help people be healed, some can have 10 problems. Come, Sam. Look at this. Please um, sit down. We're going to pray. Let me teach you something. Let me have your attention. Please look. You have to get this thing I'm teaching you now. Look at this. Sam has headache. Just as an, an example. Sam has headache. Are we together? Poverty. Number two. Number three. Delay. Are we together? Number four is what? Huh? Demonic oppression. Now, I come as a man of God. Sam lists all these problems. When I lay hands on Sam, watch this now. The level of anointing I have 
will scan through the problems and only the situations that are below the level of anointing that will be solved. He may fall, but you will find out that when he rises up, only headache will be healed. The rest will not be touched because the level of grace, anointing is not anointing, it's a lie. Go and read your Bible. How God anointed, not just that he anointed, So the level of the anointing can make your challenges relative or otherwise. I used to think anointing is anointing. It just came from the Holy Spirit. Not so, sir. Not so. There are levels, there are dimensions of the anointing. And then when I grow further, I can now come to Sam again. And I say, Sam, what couldn't I solve last year? He says, sir, I listed five cases. Only headache went. I said, well, I've come back with an upgrade. Let's try it again. I lay hands on Sam and suddenly a miracle alert will enter and all this will enter, but that delay will not be solved. So you are a blessing when you are very anointed. So anointed that most of the cases that come to you there is grace to solve it. Listen, let me tell you this. I can tell you this from experience as a man of God. There are, there are situations I know that the grace that God has put on my life is by far higher than that situation. That's why when I see people come with that thing, I don't even bother wasting time to pray for them. I say, go, it's done. It's within the liberty of my grace to produce that solution. But there are cases that when I see sometimes... I know that I've met a match for my grace. And I need to return back to the secret place. Because when God wants to lift you, he brings people with serious issues. Lord, our church members. Then he brings someone deaf on both ears. And who is not even smelling. He stands before you. Can you hear? No, even small. Not at all. You pray for him. He falls down. He wakes up richer, but not healed. Because the grace that you released was for wealth. Are you seeing why balance is powerful? It's true. I used to wonder why Kenneth Hagin will have meetings. 21 day stretch and sick people will come sometimes he will not pray for some he will leave them like that he will continue studying and growing one day he will come back and say you come and that will be it i now know what he was doing he was honest with himself he had a system of gauging was he not was he not jesus and even the disciples that will discern whether this situation is doable by me if it was not doable, they would go and call certain apostles. They were not ashamed. When it has to do with this one, <clears throat> I'm still growing. Please, come. So the disciples pray for an epileptic patient in the name of Jesus. And nothing happened. And Jesus came and said, I know the problem. Two problems. One, the level of anointing it's not there. Almost not there. Number two, your spiritual understanding. Because you saw me heal the sick effortlessly, I casted out the devil out of the gathering. But this kind goeth not. He was introducing them that there is a level where prayer and fasting will introduce a kind of power to you that will help you do certain things. I've shared a revelation with you that every time people fast and pray, it's like a spiritual energy. It's like fire that rises from within them. Do you know what that fire does? I will tell you. When a spirit leaves a man, it goes through desert regions. It's in your Bible, isn't it? And when it goes through desert regions, it becomes uncomfortable because a desert is a hot place. And it compares the desert to the body it left. If the body is colder than the desert, 
it will prefer to return back to the body. So that when a man begins to engage spiritual energy and that fire burns within you, by yourself, that spirit will leave you. The Bible lets us know that anything in the similitude of fire is uncomfortable for spirits. That's why they like water. That's why water is a major part of their habitation. Because there is restfulness there. He makes me lie down in still waters. We are going to pray. The power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. But this night we must cry for understanding. 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 We will pray for higher dimensions of power. But superior dimensions of sight and understanding. Rise up on your feet. Thank the Lord for the word you just heard tonight. Lift your voice and thank him. Lift your voice and give him praise. We are praying. Is someone lifting their voices? I found my way. To a higher level. Found my way. Greater power. If someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Shala pragadiba ladaba ladaba. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Yeah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, Fill this temple We wait on you. Lord, we pray. You. We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you. We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you. We wait on you. prayer points number one lord quicken my understanding quicken my understanding grant me access to light spiritual illumination a comprehension of your methodologies tired of guessing tired of shadow boxing tired of hoping Are you praying? Salabarakatos. Was you praying? 
Look up, please. Hallelujah. Listen. Mention the area where you need a miracle and say, Lord, what is the understanding that connects your power to that area? Lift your voice and pray. Mention the area. Lord, I desire breakthrough. I desire a job. I desire the spirit of revelation. I desire increase in ministry. What is the mystery? What is the key that will allow your power to be channeled in that area? Please pray. show me oh God like Naaman a great captain of the Syrian army but what is the cure for this leprosy reveal to me by your spirit there is a way there is a way there is a way there is a path which no town has seen the webs of the lion has not gotten there Oh, 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 Listen, please look at me, believers. If you're a pastor here, listen to me. That is why communion service is not powerful. Because most people think it's about sobo and wafa. So they say, eat the bread and swallow the, the drink. And then they smile. No. When you understand the power, you will not even be able to hold the communion set understanding they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover there is more to it you have done it the way you saw it there is more to it we are still going to pray father I'm crying to you let my eyes draw a line between your word my eyes and my situation connect something show me a key connect a mystery by the spirit I need speed in my life open down my eyes I need restoration in my life open down my eyes I don't doubt your power my understanding is limiting your power Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm be very sensitive. Listen. This is why many of you, even after an encounter, nothing happens. Then you go and buy some books and sit with them. 
and then get up and see results. No new impartation happened. In that book, there was a new host that connected a new channel for the power to flow. For a long time, you've been anointed, but you wonder why good things leave you. And then suddenly, the law of honor comes to you. You learn that honor is a law and that when you honor graces, it gives you access. From the lens of that understanding, you will start seeing the power that brings favor flow. I don't have to pray for you for fresh grace for favor. Your understanding connected you. The power is at the mercy of which channel of understanding will allow me flow. It's not a different power that brings healing. That is a different power that brings miracles. It's the same divine power. But the system of operation is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. Understanding. These are mysteries about the anointing that are found by the spirit. Questions that I asked for many years. What is the relationship between knowledge and understanding? Because some people choose knowledge. The word. The word. Other people choose anointing. Power. And I said, Lord, there, there is confusion here. I need you. And God said, no, there is no confusion, sir. The word gives you understanding. The power flows through your understanding. Representing the might of Jesus in the face of your situations. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Prayer point number two. Some of you have understanding already. But like something can happen from the water board. How many of you have seen that because your house is uphill. Even when they bring water. Have you seen that kind of thing? You open, you turn the knob to the last. And it just comes in droplets. And you want to bath. You are in a hurry. So there is something that can help you buy a pumping machine. And interface it between waterboard and your house. And when you put that machine and switch it on. Suddenly the water can even enjoy your head because of the speed. That's what many of us need to do. A multiplication of the same thing. That I have it all, but Lord, a higher dimension. I have a 1,000 naira worth of anointing, but I have a 1 million naira worth of problem. Upgrade the grace. Upgrade the grace. Lift your voice and pray. There's no doubt, Lord, I'm a prophet, but upgrade the grace. I've received the anointing for well, but upgrade the anointing. A higher measure. Please pray. Believe in what you are praying and pray. Pray. Hey, Labaranda Samarakatabakata. Thou anointed my head with oil. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup run it over. My cup run it over. Era ma se na na na, era na na era na na de. Shela ma rakata brade getech, em brade kete kete kete, rakata barando shabra de kete. A higher level of grace, a higher level of anointing, a higher investment of spiritual power for signs, for wonders, extraordinary results, strange results. Acts chapter 19. From verse 11.
there are a class of miracles called special miracles. A miracle in itself is spectacular. But there are miracles called special miracles. And they are wrought by the hands of men, not angels. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Read on. So that from his body, this is what makes it special. Because the rule is that you have to make contact with the sick. And now from his body were brought to the sick. You had our mother's testimony. Handkerchiefs and aprons and diseases departed. When your handkerchief has a voice, it's a special miracle. Because a handkerchief is not a living thing. Special miracles. It is not everyday anointing that produces special miracles. No. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled. Father, I have seen yesterday's glory. I have seen yesterday's results. But before this fast ends, Lord, shift me to a new level of anointing. I have prophesied. I have seen the sick healed. I spoke to people and their lives changed. A higher dimension. Is someone praying? A higher dimension. I've seen the grace for wealth, but a higher dimension. I've seen the revelatory gifts, the revelatory grace, but a higher dimension. I have seen influence and honor, but a higher dimension. Someone pray. Someone pray. tired Let me share with you something. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We're rounding up. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Please give us from verse 8. We're reading three verses. 8 to 10. For this thing. Listen carefully. I besought the Lord thrice. That it might Apart from me. Let's see how God answered this prayer. This is the prayer of a man who was tired of his situation. Listen to how God is answering a man's prayer. He did his best to handle that situation in his strength. And he could not handle it. Now he's asking God for assistance. And God says, my grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. My grace is sufficient but you don't know how it works if it is strength you want then it must be in exchange for weakness if there is no darkness nepa is useless listen to me very very powerful if there are no sick people dr emeka is not needed are we together if you are not thirsty even if there is a bag, a drum of pure water here, it doesn't matter to you. So he says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Let me tell you what this happens. It's a mystery. 
every time a human being becomes weak something starts happening to the power of god coming to that direction listen carefully weakness is powerful because it attracts the strength of god so when you set your soul to fast as your body begins to become weak the same spirit there is something about your weakness that is calling the power of god when jesus stayed for 40 days the weaker his body the more the holy spirit saw the need to stay it's a deep spiritual mystery jacob wanted a blessing and god looked at him from head to toe there was no weakness he said how do i help you i have to touch something there has to be weakness for my strength to be valuable the treasure cannot be stored in golden vessels the fact that the vessel is earthen makes the power comfortable so that the excellency of power might be of god so when you set your soul to fast god who allowed fasting knows what food does to the body listen carefully if you don't have this revelation you will not understand what you are doing tonight why are you doing a marathon fast that from wednesday you are not eating down till friday do you want to kill yourself what kind of nonsense is this they say you watch what happens there is a level you will get to where you will almost want to collapse then watch what happens suddenly like the eagle you will pray and you will be tired have you not noticed that there is a switch every time when you are weak you want to pray you plan to pray for three hours after seven minutes you are tired you don't even know how this will happen but you continue and continue and continue later an agency takes over you and even three hours you can't finish listen listen the power of god hardly starts things he allows you to start and then the power comes and takes you to the flight that's what happens these are very deep spiritual mysteries so these nights that you are not eating now your body is already frustrated there is a level of life and health that the body must have for the mind to work it's true when you fast your mind also is subject to fasting because your mind feeds off the health of your body that's why when you die your mind does not work so you set your soul to fast every time the nation of israel were about to be overwhelmed by their enemies they will keep their weapons down and declare a fast plus goats plus everything while they are in sackcloth and ashes the spirit of god comes through a prophet this is what god is saying and victory comes i besought the lord thrice take this away from me and it seems like there is a strength in myself that is limiting the power of god so i set my soul in the similitude of weakness through fasting and suddenly his power comes and picks you up many of you will be surprised what will happen it's not hunger starvation it's a mystery that's why i said a joy must be set before you to receive the grace to endure you're going to cry for grace the grace that will keep you through my brothers and my sisters listen let me tell you this let me tell you this if you don't learn this technology you will break down in ministry you see when i left this place i had a meeting till evening it was when i was done just few minutes to the program starting had to tidy up some other things before coming here and i've been standing here you have to learn to exchange your weakness it's a technology you must learn you are more powerful than you are but until you are weak you will not know if a terrorist comes here right now and starts chasing everybody you can run three days without food and you will not be hungry that ability was always there but there was a level of weakness that when your body 
how do I explain this now, Holy Spirit? Just believe with me that subjecting you through this spiritual discipline is not a ritual of men. My brothers and my sisters, I hate the traditions of men and vain religion that has no power. We will never practice anything in this ministry that does not have power and spiritual significance. He won't stop till your strength looks like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till my life looks like him. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. Hey, hey. God is raising sons and daughters in this place. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till our lives look like Him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like Him. So when the fast is done, then you will see that your prayer request of 10 years comes in one day. And then you say, Lord, what happened? My strength. Your weakness called for my strength. Your weakness called for my strength. Why does the Bible call fasting humility? Because it's proof that you are weak. And so you call his strength. That they humble their souls in fasting. Lord, if you don't come to help me, I cannot help myself. He says, that's the language I want. Listen. Our fast officially ends tomorrow by one. And then we come for the miracle service. Fire will burn in this place tomorrow. Amen. That everything that has not been planted by our God, He must let us go. God declared that it is extraordinary fruitfulness. That is the grace that you must carry. There will be a strong impartation in this place. And God will shift us. You are in ministry. Come with your heart open and come rejoicing. Because things must change. Hallelujah. Whatever challenge, whatever has refused to bow, come with it. Come with it to Jesus. And let us see the power of his grace at work in our midst. Don't forget tonight's teaching. Understanding allows the power to flow to the area where the breakthrough is needed. And that you will need greater dimensions of spiritual power to purchase certain possibilities in the spirit. So let this be your prayer all through tonight. Just because you are weak does not mean you should snore yourself till morning till one. Find a corner even in your weakness. If you have to kneel, kneel. You are allowed to drink water. But please trust God for grace to wake up and pray. If you have a neighbor, you have a friend, Tap the person. Say in Jesus name your destiny is calling you. Wake up. Pray. The virgins slept. And there was a call. And they didn't have the time to go and buy extra oil. And because of that they were in trouble. You have to be alert. You have to pray. And listen for what he will say. There are certain things you cannot think about now. Your body is too weak to allow your mind to think it. So your spiritual focus is accurate. You can trust your hearing. The weakness in your body will not allow you to think of the cares of this world. You will be surprised. You try to think about it and see. Your mind will give up because the body is weak. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So you can focus and pray. And your mind will be stayed on Jesus. And you travel and push through till victory is established. Father, we give you praise tonight. We honor you and we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us your ways. The way of power. 
the way of the anointing, the way of strength, the way of grace. Lord, we decree and declare that we are determined for our profiting to be made manifest in this generation. We are not ashamed to obey you. We are not ashamed to be stretched until scripture is fulfilled in our lives. Father, I pray for your people. Let there be a supply of grace. Let our humanity not catch up with us tonight. In the name of Jesus, the strength to push through until tomorrow afternoon, we release it upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.